Hi, I'm Simon from hsedocs.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a risk assessment form. The document I'm using is in Word format and it's available for free download at hsedocs.com. The document I'm about to fill in shows us the hazards involved while carrying out a specific task. It shows us who's at risk. It shows us what actions are in place to reduce risk. It shows us what further action is required. It tells us who should implement additional safety controls. It tells us when additional safety controls should be implemented. And, as well as showing us the physical risks that are involved in the task, this document also shows us the substance risks. Substance risks are substances or chemicals that are used for the task that may pose a risk. Examples of this are expanding foam, grip fill or simply dust. So we have the physical risks from carrying out the task, such as working off ladders. And we have the substance risks that we may encounter whilst carrying out the task. At the top of the form we put the company name and the name of the project we're working on. For example, it may be a school, a local authority, a building site or a swimming baths. Next, we type in the date and the review date, which should be six months into the future. Now we're ready to take a look at the first row of the form. Column 1 and 2 are linked together. They are a list of potential hazards, the people that may be at risk, and how they are at risk. This risk assessment is for hanging doors, and the first hazard is falling from height. In this case, it's safe to presume that the only person that should suffer an injury from a fall would be the operative, as he would need no more additional height than to reach the top of a door. However, if this risk assessment had been about fitting soffits and fascias at a high level, the falling from height hazard could possibly affect the operative, others on site and members of the public. Column 3 lists the control measures, which are the actions already in place to limit or prevent risk. In this case, the operative is only allowed to use a hop-up in good condition with a maximum working height of 500mm. In effect, this means that should the operative not adhere to the correct working practices, it is his own liability. So if an operative balances on a tin of paint to gain some extra height, and the tin tips over, covering the carpet in paint and causing injury to the operative, it's his own fault. The next column is for additional control measures, or actions that should be implemented to further reduce risk. If we move down the page to the fourth row, we're now looking at the hazards of slips, trips and falls. Under the Further Action Required column, we can see that the supervisor is to enforce one of the control measures from the previous column. This simply means that as the supervisor is walking round, he has to remind operatives to keep walkways clear and not to leave waste or materials on site. The next column gives us the initials of the person responsible for the further control measures, and the following column gives us a target timescale for implementing further measures. The target timescale may be from the start of the contract, by a certain date, or from a certain date. The final column is a tick box, simply sign and date once further actions have been implemented. The first section of this form was the contract details. The second section was the physical risks. And now, as we move down the form, we come to the substance risks. In this section, we identify the potential hazards that may arise from coming into contact with substances required to complete the task. If we scroll down the first column to expanding foam, you will see that the second column tells us the risks, and the third and fourth columns tell us to follow the manufacturer's instructions and to read the cost assessment prior to use. In most cases of substance risk, column 3 and 4 will state the same thing. Of course, you will need to have a cost assessment for each substance. On this particular risk assessment, one of the substances that differs in column 3 and 4 is dust. Here we can see control measures set out in column 3 to prevent excessive dust and to protect the operative. Finally, we come to section 4 of this risk assessment. In this section, you simply type your name, sign and date. I'm in favour of using digital signatures on health and safety documents so that I can email signed electronic copies to people. Thanks for watching and I hope this has helped. And remember, if you'd like to use this risk assessment form, it's available for free download at hsedocs.com.